Now let us talk about the structures of RNA, tRNAs. Now the tRNAs are called the transfer RNAs. As we know, these tRNAs are, are actually the carrier for uh, the amino acid sequences. It has anticodon loop and it also have the attachment site. Now the tRNAs is exactly looks like the characteristic L-shaped structure, and the tRNA is possessing the tertiary structure in between uh, among those all RNA structures. Okay, and among all those RNAs, tRNA possesses various types of uh, what we can say uh, the modified bases like pseudouridine, ribothymidine or dihydrouridine uh, like this. Okay, so we have previously talked about the pseudouridine where we have the structural difference in these regions. We have the ribothymidine and we can also have the dihydrouridine where we having the two hydrogen groups extra present there in these two positions. Okay, so uh, the structures of tRNAs as we know have to be varied from one to another. So there are uh, different 20 amino acids that you can find inside our body. So so there uh, we must need 20 different types of tRNAs for carrying those different 20 types of amino acids. And that's what exactly happening. So we are not only having one type of tRNA, uh, we are having 20 different varieties of tRNA which are specified for attaching with a particular amino acid which are specified for carrying a particular amino acid and carry them in, in, into the protein synthesis machinery, pro proteasome, uh, in, into the protein synthesis complex okay now uh, so in this case what we can look uh, due to the presence of this uh, this uh, slightly modified bases they can have huge enormous uh, they uh, they further increase the ability of making the hydrogen bonds the further increase uh, the making uh, the uh, the capability of making bonds between the bases and that actually helps them to to make really really strong structures now if we look, look at the picture here like that the interactions fold uh, between uh, between these different loops so this is the secondary structure of this tRNA if you consider this is the primary structure all of the primary structure will have this linear strand only having the backbone and bases just coming out from the backbone now in this picture if it folds and it folds something like that to make the C prime end just uh, getting more elastic uh, stretched and five prime is shortened and here we have it three different four actually actually four loops uh, at the below we are having the anticodon loop in this anticodon loop we have bases and this base is having the uh, complementary sequence for for the proper codon that we can find in mRNA where this tRNA star is going to bind and we have D loop in one side and the T size C loop in exactly the opposite side. Now this T size C loop, uh, we are having the pseudouridine present there. That's why we call it the T size C loop because we are having uh, the thymine and, uh, and pseudouridine and cytosine right after one another. That's why we call it the T size C loop. And the opposite side, we are we are having we are having the we call them the D loop. We are having the GC here. We are having uh, the adenine uh, nucleotides here, uh, adenine uh, nucleotides, and they, they put together. Too. So what is going on? Uh, this is the st secondary structure which is pretty much stable, and we also have a short stretch of small loop which is called a variable loop, which is just in between the anticodon loop and T size C loop. Okay. Now, if we look at the structure, uh, this is a structure uh, that only can be made uh, when uh, we are having. Uh, the stretches of uh, nucleotide sequences that can have the freedom of making bonds between themselves more than the normal arduin sharga pairing like AT and GC. So they can pair via GU pairing and all these types of pairings <coughs> and as a result of the presence of this uh, pseudouridine and ribothymidine and dihydrouridine residues they can further stretch this kind of capability to make another round of hydrogen bonding another round of interaction another round of hydrophobic uh, stacking interaction between the flat faces of the bases uh, 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 to, to make a further round of complex structure which we call a tertiary structure as you can find in this picture so this is the same picture which is denoting the which part of this region is start to uh, interact with which part so this g of this d loop is start to interact with the c which is found in the variable loop now most of these interactions are, are being carried out from a d loop and t size c loop so what we are generally looking at just visualize this picture that this d loop is just coming out of this plane and it is going to interact with this t loop to make a folded structure and this is the fold this fold actually makes the structure the l shaped and the characteristic l shape of this tRNA okay so that's why this part is really important that we are finally 
folding this tRNA to make a tertiary structure. So everything is fine till that point. So due to the presence of this unusual basis, due to the presence of this modified uh, nucleotide sequences, what we can do, what they can do, they can pair bonds, bonds with themselves, they can pair hydrogen bonds with themselves, they can also make the hydrophobic stacking interactions between themselves and finally they can fold. And most of the time this D loop and T size C loops is start to interact, they will fold to, to give the characteristic L shape to the tRNA structure and that can make a really really stable structure. Now now we can find the structure something like that. Okay, so this is the secondary structure it will fold something like this. So we can have different loops like this. Just consider this is the D loop. Uh, so we are having this D loop here and we are having this uh, T size C loop here. So this T size C loop and D loops are interacting as we can see. So the D loop which have to be present here, so it start to fold uh, in this orientation in this direction as you can see here and after the folding this structure becomes a, L li a structure uh, like this. Okay. Now at the end we are having the CCA tail and this is the 3 prime end and this is the 5 prime end as you can see in this picture. Okay. So that's how uh, this RNA structure is being made. And that's why the tertiary structure of RNA is being stabilized because of not only the presence of uh, the unusual type of base pairing but also the presence of unusual bases. Okay, and that's all and I hope that's going to help you.